What would it mean to you to turn Kamaro Usman into a meme? Into a meme. Into a meme. Uh, I want to turn his ass into a meme. Facts, bro. This is Johnny with Tiger Bomb MMA, and tonight I'm going over UFC 286. Edwards versus Usman 3, giving you my thoughts and predictions on the whole card. Jose wasn't available today, so I'm just doing it by myself. Uh, overall, man, 15 fights on this card. It's taking place in the O2 in London. It's going to be a good story for Edwards if he wins it at home and he defends against the Yankee coming in from allegedly Nebraska. It, it's, it's an interesting overall card. I'm excited for the, for the crowd. They are bananas. And we've got a lot of UK fighters here, and one in particular that is adopted UK. Uh, one of, well, actually, a couple, but the one I was mentioning is the first fight of the night Veronica Hardy versus Juliana Miller. Veronica Macedo, formerly, I uh, got married to Dan Hardy, and now she is fighting Juliana Miller after about, what, two, three years away, which is crazy. I really don't know what she was doing. And I think she was doing like a bit of a. What's the word? Uh, commentary or journalism. But I'm glad she's back. Watching tape on her was pleasant because I was unaware of how beautiful she really was. I'm like, God damn, she's really pretty. Uh, Juliana Miller, Juliana Killer Miller, uh, she is minus 435, which I think is absolutely <sighs> rough, just like her face. Um, Hardy plus 325. This fight, if I'm being honest, is dog or pass right off the bat. Uh, Juliana Miller, she's very sloppy. She's a wild striker. Her BJJ, she's a comes from a 10th planet background. Good things are that she pushes a relentless pace. She keeps going forward. She's relentless with takedowns, but her takedowns are crap. They're not set up properly. She doesn't know how to control position from top. And she's just kind of overall not a minus 435 fighter off the bat like she's not very good i understand betting oh let me let me rephrase that i understand the the odds on hardy being so ridiculous plus 325 she hasn't been in the cage in a while god knows how good she is but what i saw from her in her previous fights she's pretty damn solid like she was given julian robertson a good run for her money reversing her on the bottom like She's got good kicks. She's got good striking, much better striking than Juliana Miller, who kind of just wings it, gets hit a lot. But she's one of those girls who is willing to take a shot to give a shot. Uh, I don't know what she's doing in this picture. She's kissing something. I saw a little bit of her uh, Instagram, and she seems like a bit of a uh, whore. But, yeah, overall, I got to go with Veronica Hardy. Again, from what I saw, it, it, to me, it's a dog or pass, but she's really good. Got an arm bar in um, Pollyanna Viana way back in the day. Like, she's only 27 years old. Her being away for like two years isn't a horrible thing. Knowing that she must have been training or striking with you know Dan Hardy, her striking to me should get better. Uh, her BJJ black belt, I think it's going to come into play here because Juliana Miller, if she does get the takedowns, I just don't know how well she's going to be able to control Veronica on, on the ground. Like I think she can get swept. And if Hardy can you know, either get an angle, get an arm or reverse her, which I think she will. It's going to really put it on Juliana Miller. Only thing I will say about Juliana Miller, because I call her a whore, she should be 4-0 and instead of 3-1. and She definitely beat that Claire Guthrie in Invicta. I thought she won two rounds to whatever. Uh, but I guess that is the downside of having shitty striking, that when you're moving forward with your face and you're getting hit in the face, despite you getting a takedown, they will give it to the opposite corner. So... To me, with these fights, with Veronica Hardy coming out more than likely with the British flag, I think it's going to be very good for her. If she, say, is in a rough fight with Juliana Miller, I think she might edge those rounds at the very least get a split decision. But I do think she's capable of getting a finish here or just dominantly beating up Juliana Miller because she sucks in the striking. And, uh, yeah, she leaves herself open. I think Brogan Walker nearly caught her in an arm bar. And if she can do that, I know Veronica Hardy can do that. So I'll go with Hardy. Round number one submission. For me, it's more of a dogger pass. Probably will be putting a little bit of money, maybe a unit or half a unit on Hardy to win this one. Next bout, we've got lightweight Jai Herbert versus Ludovic, Mr. Highlight Klein. The black country banger Jai Herbert is minus, I'm sorry, plus 135. Come back on Ludovic Klein, minus 165. To be brief with this one, it's such a like don't touch it type of fight. 
Like, do not touch it. I, I think uh, definitely doesn't go the distance would be the smarter play between the two because we really don't know which Jai Herbert's going to show up. Uh, Ludovic Klein, definitely really good at, at lightweight. I like them a lot at lightweight from what I've seen in tape. Uh, I'd say going back and watching his tape on featherweight, different guy, like completely different, better cardio, better everything, better output, better striking like I, I feel as if he's willing to do much more crazier shit like in in the picture that i have here is jumping up kicking i think mason jones in the face and it was like it landed and it's like this dude is super dynamic like just moving up was such a surprise because i was expecting the same dude at featherweight but he's just so much better at lightweight like period like it, it just really benefited him but in this particular fight he is fighting a guy with although he has a really glass chin and possibly a very fractured psyche after what happened to him last time he fought a shorter featherweight moving up to to lightweight in England with the same reach advantage that he had and the same height advantage. Is he going to come out here looking a little tentative? Like his last fight where he beat Kyle Nelson, Herbert, that is, it was, uh, it was embarrassing to say the least like really like i i kept saying like did this fucker forget how to fight did did Ilya Taporia knock the fight out of him and it seemed like it but what what i'm worried about is that like i know how good jai herbert can be like staying on the outside using his length his kicks his knees up the middle the guy's very good trains with leon edwards i do think that he can win this fight like he can definitely knock out ludovic klein or just implement his physicality he's a much bigger dude i know he can beat ludovic klein it's just that if, say, Jai Herbert falls into those same either mental hurdles or, say, he makes that same mistake he made with Jai Herbert, or I'm sorry, with uh, Jai Herbert makes the mistake he did with uh, Ilya Taporia where he let him back him up against the cage, it could not be a good night for Jai Herbert. I, I will go with Klein. I do think he is definitely live here for a knockout, which, of course, he is. He He's a banger. But Jai Herbert, because I worry about him having a really good performance, like him getting up, being motivated, like I don't know what his mentality is like, but if I got my ass knocked out in my home, like whatever state, country, in front of my fans and friends, it it might do something to me or it might motivate the shit out of me to get up, make sure I don't make those mistakes again so I can redeem myself. Or I might be incredibly pussified. And I'm like, I don't want that to happen again. That's why I'm like, we don't know what Jai Herbert's going to show up. For that, I might just say go with the doesn't go the the distance, but definitely I'm leaning Klein here. I, I think he's got a very good shot to catch the chin. But I also do worry that if we do get him better, Jai Herbert here, like he's like, I need to redeem myself. He's more than capable of winning this fight. So I might not touch it, just enjoy it. Cause I think this could be a, a big trap. Like I a hundred percent see this being like a weird fight that like doesn't go the way people predict it. Uh, so I'll just go with Klein as a pick and we'll see what I do later on. Next bout, we've got Joanne Jojo Calderwood or wood versus Luana Carolina. Wood is minus 165. Come back on Carolina plus 140. Uh, despite the fact that I like to fade the older fighters like Joanne Wood here, she's 37. I'm surprised that Luana is only 29 for whatever reason. I thought she'd be a lot older than that. I think just to cut, cut to the chase here. Jojo's a much better fighter. This is the least level competition she has fought in a while. Let me just list them off. Alexa Grasso champion, uh, Tyler Santos <laughs> champion and, uh, Lauren Murphy. Uh, Lauren's just really lucky sometimes. And she beat Jessica. I lost to Jennifer Maya. Jennifer Maya's I'll talk about her later. And uh, Luana Carolina got uh, spinning back elbowed by Molly McCann. Um, for me, I really don't know what Luana's going to bring to the table. She's not necessarily the better striker between the two. I think definitely Joanne would when she lets things go and she's in a flow state. She's much better despite her age and her setbacks and whatnot. It's just Carolina usually can get some offense off on smaller people like Godinez and surprised uh, Pollyanna Botalio. That's crazy. Yeah, she got her knee ripped off by Lipsky. Can't believe it was almost three years ago. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm going with uh, Joanne Wood by decision. I'm not going to spend more time on this one. This one's interesting. We've got Jake White Kong Hadley versus Malcolm X Gordon. I feel like there's some racial tensions between the two here. We got White Kong 
and Malcolm X. And the odds have it minus 335 for Hadley. Come back on Malcolm Gordon is plus 250. Malcolm Gordon, let me read my notes on him. I wrote, sucks, but he doesn't suck, which he's an interesting cat. Like, it's always one of those, like, LOL fade Malcolm, as I wrote Gordy, because I didn't have the respect to write his name correctly. Uh, yeah, Malcolm Gordon's a funny guy. Like, he, he survives Mokayev up until the last round takes his back nearly nearly submits him i i wouldn't call that particularly like oh he nearly got him out of there he was in such trouble it's just he got his back and he attempted a choke but he wasn't ever really in any trouble mokaev i would say and uh, he beat bondar which ruined my beautiful parlays i'll never forget that that he broke his arm i was so pissed god i was so pissed the guy is just such an anomaly sometimes like he he has a good style to beat low-level dudes in the UFC, but a guy like Jake Hadley, it ain't going to happen. Jake Hadley, despite his shortcomings being like his takedown defense a little bit, I think he's overall better on the feet. He's better on the ground. He's better off his back. He's got better cardio. He's just tougher, and he's going to thoroughly whoop Malcolm Gordon. And I don't even want to say what I'm thinking, that the only way Malcolm Gordon can win, but just look back at Dennis Bondar. I think that might be the only way he can do this. If Malcolm Gordon, which I fully predict him to go for takedowns, he's not going to want to strike with Hadley because Hadley's he's a southpaw. He he knows how to defend himself really well on the feet with I wouldn't necessarily call it like the the X guard, but he kind of lifts his elbow up a little bit, just kind of like a, a Philly shell with an elbow. I really don't know what you would call it, uh, but yeah, I think Jake Hadley definitely wins. I think inside the distance just really depends on the sequence, right? If he keeps it on the feet and Malcolm Gordon wants to keep it standing because he doesn't want to get submitted by by Hadley, I think he can knock him out, attack the body, catch him with the left hook to the head or a right hook in this occasion. Or if Gordon is like, ah, I want to test his ground game, he's going to get triangled. So I'll just say inside the distance, my prediction would be Hadley by submission round number two. I think Gordon would have a decent first round. Like he comes out motivated. He survives. He'll look fine. Round number two, Hadley takes over. He gets that submission. So I'll go round two, Hadley. Next bout, quite interesting at middleweight. We've got Christian Leroy Duncan versus Dusko Todorovic. Um, uh, huh, he's kneeling. Hope it's not during a national anthem, but uh, Christian Leroy Duncan, minus 210. Going back, I saw his fight live when, when he won the belt in Cage Warriors against uh, uh, Milan. And I was a little surprised by it just because of the, the situation. I think the dude lost a, a contact and it, he got taken down. He got controlled the first round. And that's kind of what I was looking at. I'm like, can this guy get up? Because I know what he can do on the feet. The guy is fucking athletic on the feet. He's got good cardio. He's got, I don't know what his base is, but he seems to have some sort of like Taekwondo style to him. I don't know if it's like a traditional Taekwondo style, but dude likes to throw his flying knees, his spin kick. He, the guy is absolutely a spinner and he's very fun to watch. He's a big boy, six foot two. He is 27 years old. So roughly identical in stats and shit like that with Dusko, who's 28. He's six foot one. I don't know what uh, Leroy's reaches, but Dusko's is 72 or 74. But yeah, minus 210 for Duncan, plus 170 for Todorovic. Off the bat, I'm looking at that plus 170. I'm like, what can Todorovic do to win this fight? Use his wrestling. Use his wrestling to slow down Christian, to really control him, beat him up a little bit, and then maybe try to submit him. But overall, like your game plan should be focused on controlling Duncan on the ground. And then if everything else falls in line, get the finish. But with Christian... Christian uh, Duncan, like what I like about him is that he definitely knows that people are trying to take him down. And that really is the game plan for most because he's so dynamic and so super athletic on the feet. And that's that's really the best way I can describe him. He's a very athletic fighter, the way he can just explode. And he seems to have really good cardio. One thing that I wrote, I don't know if anyone can can tell me. Does he have like alopecia or something? Because I see one fight where his hairline is receding, kind of like uh you know, standard, like, I don't know what you'd call it, the whatever. There's a name for it. And um, the next fight, like, his hairline is just perfect, like the reverse Usman. Like, what's going on with this dude? So I'm like, is his hair, like, 
respecting him now and his hairline's coming back like oh shit let's uh let's get back on here because uh that's the only thing that really like stood out to me the most about him like what's going on with his hairline but the guy is super fun to watch i do think he can beat dusko because i i've always said that dusko's kind of got a weird chin and the more i look back he doesn't necessarily have a a chin issue it's more so that when he gets hurt and he hits the ground he kind of flops around a little bit like when punaheli hit him he was just like flying all over the cage when chidi knocked him out he actually didn't even knock him out he just dropped him and he kind of flopped around a bit and he was still with it he could have technically continued a little bit further he would have still been conscious i think he might have tried to get like some some underhooks to get back up but with christian duncan he's not necessarily the most powerful striker his his knockouts come from like a momentum based attack like either a spinning back fist that leads to punches or a flying knee shit like that so i don't know if he can knock out dusko straight up unless dusko makes a a big mistake like shooting for legs for a double leg and then he eats like a flying knee. So it's a mystery to me because I do think that Dusko can win this fight because to me, Duncan isn't like this phenomenal striker with incredible power punches. Like I do think that he can eat a Dusko that is could eat a lot of the punches and kicks from, uh, from Duncan and then potentially clinch him up, take him down. He's very good at keeping that position, like just getting a body lock, holding on, just, getting you tired and I, I can see this fight being really close uh i don't want to say that it's a dog or pass for me because i do think duncan who i like what he can bring to the table like he's definitely training his wrestling he's definitely training getting back up i think he's going to be the more output he's going to have the better output between the two and i think he's going to have better moments in there but i do worry that dusko can control him Although I've, I've never really seen Duncan get fully manhandled on the ground based off of the tape that I saw. I'm going to stick with Duncan. I'll say round number two, TKO. I'm kind of leaning towards like a, either TKO or a, or a decision. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll probably stay away from this one just because I know how good Dusko can be. That I can see him giving uh, Christian a really rude awakening in his UFC debut. So former Cage Warriors champion. So, man, I got a, I got bad history betting those guys. Like, Mason Jones came into the UFC. I thought he was going to beat uh, – what's his name? Didn't beat him. I was pissed. But, yeah, I'll stay away from this one. But I'll go with Lung, uh, Duncan, round number two, TKO. Next bout, we've got Lerone Murphy versus Gabriel Santos. The Miracle versus Mos... Mosquitinho. I'm assuming that means, like, fly or some shit. I'm not sure. We've got Murphy. He is 11 0 and 1 versus Gabriel Santos is 10 and 0. So someone's O has got to uh, go away. What are the odds for this one, though? I'm not seeing. Here we go. It's floating around, like, say, the minus 175 for Murphy. Come back on Santos is a plus. Plus one forty five ish around. It's an interesting bout. Like I, I know how good Murphy can be, and his last fight was about a year and a half ago. I think I'm not sure he got injured off of a bicycle accident, and his former opponent, which was uh, also a Brit, in God, I'm thinking of his. Uh, I can't think of his fucking name. Nathaniel Wood, he got his knee sliced. So we've got Gabriel Santos coming in short notice. Recently won the the uh, featherweight bout or title in uh, LFA. Pretty good showing of himself. I like, went back, watched some fights for him to see, like, hey, what can he bring to the table against Lerone Murphy? Who Lerone Murphy, I have to say, he's fought basically every style in the UFC. So he fought a really good grappler and wrestler in Mach 1. Handled that. He fought a really good striker in Douglas De Silva de Andrade. Handled that. Fought, uh, who was it? Yeah, it was Zubaira Tukagov. Went to a split decision with him. It was a draw. Ricardo Ramos. He's fought like everyone in the UFC that would give him issues. And when I saw Gabriel Santos, I'm like, I don't think he's going to be able to present anything for Lerone Murphy. The only way Lerone Murphy w loses this fight is if, say, he wasn't training and he makes a huge stunt and i don't think he's gonna do that 
Santos is a good fighter. Like, I'm not going to take anything away from him, but he doesn't present anything too spectacular for me. I don't see anything that he can do that Lerone Murphy hasn't dealt with. Like, his best option isn't to strike with him, but try to grapple him and try to, like, say, pull a Marab type of performance where you're not necessarily beating the guy's ass, but doing enough to make him look like he's losing. I hope that didn't sound salty as fuck because I'm not salty about it. It was a good performance, but like just do enough to win because I don't think you're going to be able to beat Lerone Murphy. I, I think his faint game is really good. I think his overall game is excellent. The only issue I have with him is like he has to get better at the takedown defense. Like when you're going to be fighting top high level grapplers, which I don't think Santos is, I don't think he's very good at getting people down. Jiu jitsu wise, solid. But when you're going to fight the top level dudes in the division, your takedown defense has to be on point. You cannot get taken down by like Amir Marikwa, Makwan Amir Khani anymore. Despite, you know, he's going to, Makwan gets everybody down, but still like, hey, I want to see better than getting like completely dominated by him. Because of just the overall package of Murphy and who he's fought, I know how much better he is. Great striking. I think he's going to actually uh, win this one by decision. I think Santos is a tough guy. I would have said Lerone Murphy by knockout, but I think knowing how tough Santos is and how he's able to come back, I think he'll be able to recover from any sort of devastating shot and then make it to the end of the round. So I'll go with uh, Murphy by a decision. Hopefully it's not one of those fucky decisions because I can, uh, just because I saw um, Zubaira, I just remembered Brenner because uh, Santos fought Brenner, beat Brenner, and that's when I knew Mike Brenner sucks. Like Santos just kind of easily beat his ass. And then I remembered, like, yeah, Brenner allegedly beat Zubaira Tukagov. And I'm like, uh, I hope that doesn't happen here. I really hope that there's no goofy ass. Oh, shit. I think I just won uh, money on the Oscars, boys. <laughs> nice. I did it. I had a bet on the Oscars where I, the chick from uh, everything, everywhere, all at once was going to win. And uh, it feels good betting on diversity or whatever. But, yeah, um, Lerone Murphy decision next bout we've got muhammad mokaya versus rafael fiolo the pastor versus the punisher but even if i did research on the boy he is an actual pastor i was like huh at first i'm like is it like the meat al pastor no he's a pastor he's 14 and 2 against the 8 no of mokaev of course mokaev is going to be a huge favorite he's minus 800 come back on fiolo is plus 550 and Mokaev is going to win this one. I hate admitting that because I will say that Fialho is probably the best fighter he's going to fight right now. But Mokaev, he did a lot of really bad shit against um, Malcolm Gordon. To say that like he didn't finish him immediately, it is what it is, right? Like You, you can't finish everybody immediately. Gordon's got a decent enough jujitsu black belt game that he can stifle you a bit. The way he was striking with him was awful. He was throwing shitty spinning back kicks. And it was just not, it was not for me. Like, it's it's not for me to say, like, I'm going to include this guy in my parlays for inside the distance because he did give everybody a scare with um, Malcolm X. When he got that submission in, like, the late, late third round, I was like, oh, thank God. But, like, I learned my lesson there. Like, do not just max bet. Mokaev, not necessarily max bet him, but don't include him in every parlay. I think um, Fialo's going to give him a decent enough fight. Like he's a decent fighter. He's a he's got the jujitsu black belt. He he is a good Muay Thai striker, but I don't think he presents anything really that Mokaev is is hasn't dealt with. It's just more so Mokaev's ability to control where the fight is going to go. That's going to lead him to this to this decision win. Um, I'm going to pick him by decision. I think he doesn't finish Fialho. I think he's good enough on the ground to avoid getting submitted. He's definitely not going to get knocked out unless something crazy Mokaev throws happens to land on him. So my money's going to be on the decision for Mokaev. If I am going to bet him, it'll be just straight as three round decision period. I, I don't think he's going to be able to finish Fialho. Um, Fialho, let me see what my notes have on him because he's he's okay. Novo uh, Nyao. I just wrote Muay Thai boy, black belt boy. He's good, but doesn't really present any danger to Mocha. 
I think I wrote that he has a chance to win, but I doubt he's going to capitalize on it. Like if he, if say Mokaev makes a like the slightest error in not putting his head in the right position going for the takedown, I don't think that uh, Fiajo is going to be able to fully complete the the choke or or reverse. I, I think he's going to get thoroughly whooped on the ground, but not not to the point that he's going to get finished. So I'll go with uh, Mohamed Mokaev by a decision. Next bout, did too much research on this one, but we've got Sam Patterson, the future, versus the Red Fox, Why Anal Ashmoth. Why Anal? Why not? But currently we have Patterson minus 280 comeback on Ashmoth, plus 225, the Israeli fighting the Brit. I really wanted to pick Ashmoth here. I wanted him to be strong enough and fast enough and wily enough to crack Patterson because Patterson, my biggest issues with him is that he is, although getting better with his defense, he's a tall motherfucker, six foot three at, at lightweight, for God's sakes, fighting a five foot nine fighter. He's, he's pretty good. Like he's not the greatest fighter I've ever fucking seen. He's not the best prospect out there. I do think he's going to have to move up eventually because he's going to have the John or not John Vick, but uh, James Vick problems in the future where there are going to be guys faster, stronger, and just the right amount of tough enough to land that overhand on your chin and knock you out. I just don't think it's going to be Ash off here. I, I I did see some good stuff from him on his Instagram where I'm like, oh, shit, like, I don't need to tape this guy because he's throwing all these kicks and shit. He's super athletic. He's doing, like, um, some fucking twirly whirly stuff uh break dancing that is like the guy looks super athletic but watching him fight he doesn't really implement any of that in his fighting style like he he's mostly kind of a wrestler he's a decent enough striker in this particular case so i think sam patterson's going to be the much better striker and i do see a possibility that ashov or ashmoths can possibly crack peterson i just i don't see it happening right now i think uh, I saw a fight, probably a second fight, where Peterson does get dropped and it gets stopped, but it was kind of a, a really early stoppage. They could have let him go a little further. And, uh, yeah, like from, from what I see, although his defense isn't the greatest, I, I think he's learning to use his length properly from, like, his second fight that I saw to his last fight. Like, he's definitely improved. He is still leaving some openings there. I just don't think that that Ashmaz is going to be able to capitalize on him. So I'm going to take Patterson. The The guy is pretty sneaky because he has those long-ass arms. God, his reach is ridiculous. 78-inch reach at, at lightweight. He's got really good chokes, and I think that because Ashmaz likes to really grapple, I think he can get caught in that choke. I will say round number three, I'll, I'll go with submission for Patterson. I think his... His ground game, because he's so big, he can stuff takedowns, he can sprawl. And if he gets on top of you, we can see a Romanov versus Volkov situation here where it's like, oh, shit, he's fucking huge. <laughs> so I, I will go with Patterson. I think he wins this fight. It's really up to him. I can see him getting the knockout, but I think the the better outcome for him to definitely get a finish here would be the submission. I think his submission game might be a little bit better then uh, the Red Fox is here, why ain't also? I'll go with uh, Patterson by third round submission. Next bout, we've got another contender series boy and Chris Duncan versus Omar Morales. And I'll be out front, man. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one. I saw the odds and I'm like, why is it so close? Like, I know Morales is 37. He's getting up there in age. He just got knocked out. He's minus 115. Duncan is minus 105. And I'm like, Duncan just got a knockout in the contender series. And I'm like, wait a minute. I feel something. I'm like, oh, yeah, I lost a shit ton of money fading the guy against uh, Charlie Campbell. Charlie was fucking this kid up. And then Charlie made a big ass mistake. And he got caught, got knocked out. And it happens. Then I'm like, oh, yeah, let me go back and rewatch because this Chris Duncan seems like a tough kid. Like, he's tough. He's durable. I go back and I watch his other contender series fight with, uh, uh, Slava, Slava Claus, and I'm like, oh, he's looking pretty good. Oh, shit, he doesn't move his head. He has his zero head movement. He gets cracked a lot. He hits hard, definitely, but the guy has zero head movement, and he is just there to get hit. He's very slow, and I wrote down that he reminds me. What the hell did he remind me of? Reminds me of Jimmy Crute, just a lightweight Jimmy Crute. 
just very similar, but without the solid grappling. Uh, he's a strong tank of a man. He's five foot, five foot ten, seventy one and a half inch reach. I do like that he is willing to mix in his takedowns, and he does have that massive power. But to me, I think Omar Morales, despite the age, he's gonna catch the chin of Duncan. The only way Duncan can win this fight, he has to knock out Morales. He has to go for it. But because Morales is a much better striker, he moves better. His head movement is actually existent. I think he can get some really nasty strikes off on Duncan and hurt him bad. And I'm going to predict that Morales is going to knock him out because I, I, I was pissed reliving that Charlie Campbell fight because like, it's not really that I was angry about losing the money. It's just, it is what it is. It's more so that they took him into the UFC. I'm like, dude, you're high. You're hiring Duncan when he's not ready like you clearly see that he's not ready he got fucked up by charlie campbell and i'm like it sucks like i'm gonna benefit from it from fading him but i just thought like it's a little too soon for the kid like give him a little bit more seasoning make sure he learns how to move his head i don't think he's learned it quite yet and i think omar's gonna give him a lesson on that so i'll go round number one morales by knockout Next bout, we've got the, what is this? The prelim main event between Jack Shank, Shank. Jack Tank Shore versus Mr. Finland, Maquan Mirkani. Uh, plus 380 for Maquan, right off the bat. Automatic, you have to bet that. Against minus 500, Jack Shore. We all know the meme, like Mirkani round number one submission or just a Mirkani submission, period. The guy's always live for that fucking damn choke. And Jack Shore is no exception. Jack Shore obviously got choked out his last fight, but I'll get to that specifically. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to say Jack Shore is live to get choked out because he got choked out his last fight. He's live to get choked out because Mr. Finland's really fucking good at choking you out. Guy's just solid at that. He's, he's definitely got that cardio for that first round. He's literally getting a little bit better each and every time we see him with that cardio, but it does fail him tremendously after the first round if he doesn't get you out of there. He can get at least two solid rounds in the bank for him with his grappling, but that third round comes out, he's going to be exhausted, and, you know, he's going to be live to get his ass beat. And so with with Makwan, what I mean is that he's getting better with his fight with, um, I can't remember if it was Jonathan Pierce or if it was Lerone Murphy. It was Jonathan Pierce. Lerone Murphy just never mind leaves killed his brain cells jonathan pierce it was i think the second round and I, I thought his gas tank looked a little bit better and i'm thinking the way i remember the fight with jack shore and ricky simone that ricky was just kind of like tossing him all over the place and i'm like maybe maquan can do the same for at least two rounds and that was not the case after watching that simone fight again the minus 500 kind of made a lot more sense you know, Jack Shore was was doing pretty well. It was a really close first round. It was becoming a close second round. Just that neither guy could really hold the other one down. Ricky was doing better controlling Jack Shore, but he wasn't able to just take him down with ease. Jack Shore really showed some good crisp boxing and a good well-roundedness to him. My issue was, like, because he's going to be moving up to featherweight from bantamweight, how is that going to really do him any good? Like, he's, he's still kind of a sh smaller dude. He's five foot eight. And uh, he doesn't necessarily carry the frame that I want to see. But yeah, after watching that fight with Ricky, the, the reason he got choked out wasn't because he just didn't have the proper defense. Ricky Simone cracked his ass, Bambi legged him, got on top of him, and Ricky just got the choke in. Didn't even have to pass over with the arm triangle, just got it from Mount, squeezed the life out of him. And I don't see Maquan being able to do that. I don't see him being able to submit him that easily. I mean, it could definitely happen in the first round if he catches him. I just don't see Jack Shore, who is a very solid grappler, having the the threat of getting hurt by Maquan to put him in that choke. That's why I am going to go with Jack Shore, round number two, TKO. I I don't know if he'll choke him out. I think uh, with Maquan, once he gets exhausted, he puts up a better fight with like fighting off the hands with the choke, opposed to like fighting off the hands. Period. So I think the best option is maybe a, a stoppage via strikes for Jack Shore. So I'm going to say round number two. I think Shore actually gets his own takedowns on Amir Khani in the first round, but he doesn't finish him then. Because although Amir Khani is a very, very strong, fantastic grappler in the first, I think Jack Shore is he, he's really fucking good. 
um, I, and I'm hoping that we see a, a new genesis of the boy at featherweight. So I'm going to go with him second round TKO. Main card opener. We've got Marvin, the Italian dream, Vittori versus Roman, the cracker Delize. And the odds have it in favor of Vittori minus 275. Come back on Delize, the hairy dick plus 220. I'll give it to Delize from what I'm hearing is that he dumped Cheyenne Bays. And I'm just like, good, good for you. Marvin Vittori, what I found strange about this one is that they were both training at uh, Extreme Couture. And I'm like, is is Roman still there? Because I know Marvin. Marvin just recently joined. He's like BFF now with Sean Strickland. And um, Roman was there. And I know Roman and uh, Curtis, Chris Curtis, were having a bit of a bromance because Chris Curtis avenged his loss to Jack Hermanson. I'm sorry. Uh, Roman uh, avenged that a loss for him where he got that nasty sweep into the like reverse calf slicer, whatever, fucking STF, and then he pounded him out. It was insane, man. Like Roman Delize at middleweight right now is, is a scary guy, man. He's hurting guys really bad. He he broke Kyle Dawkins' face, and I'll just say it. I don't think Kyle's ever going to be the same again. I think he's he's done. I think he might have to retire or possibly move up. Jesus, poor Kyle, man. He destroyed Phil Haw's knee and then knocked him out. But who doesn't knock out Phil Haw's? And then what he did to Jack Hermanson was incredibly impressive. Like, I was so thoroughly like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, when you think something's going to happen and it starts happening where, where Jack Hermanson's just using his better game, just stifling him on the feet, taking him down, holding him down. I'm just like, oh, yeah. It's about time, baby. And then, and then Roman sweeps him. Goes to the leg lock, then he gets him in that position, and I'm like, oh, shit, <laughs> this is not good. As for Marvin Vittori, like, I wrote down something. It's kind of funny, but I think it's true that uh, he is a jobber to the stars, and what that means is that he only loses to the top-level competition. He's not losing to scrubs or guys outside of, like, the championship picture. Like, for example, obviously we know he lost to Adesanya twice. He lost to... Uh, Whitaker just recently. Who else did he lose to? Antonio Carlos Jr. A little bit. He's a millionaire. But uh, yeah, like he he typically only loses to guys who are top level dudes. Like the fact that he beat Paulo Costa was like, oh shit, he beat Paulo. Goddamn. Marvin's a tough guy. I think his striking is good. His volume's good at a three round fight with Roman to lead. Say it could get tough if Roman just kind of goes full. Roman on him, full Georgian. He has a lot of power. It's just to me, I think Roman Roman isn't championship level material. I, I think he's good where he's at right now. What is he, number eight? I just don't think he's going to be able to beat a guy like Marvin. Like uh, Roman, I think he did start doing his camp at Tiger Muay Thai. I'm not sure if he's, he's left Extreme Couture just due to the circumstances because they're both at Extreme. And that's what I, I like about that is like if they are both still at extreme that they're like, hey, I'll I'll go to Tiger for this camp and then we'll we'll get back because like they're trying to essentially build an elite camp for middleweights there because we've got uh, Strickland, we've got Marvin, we've got Curtis shit fucking Buckley's there now, but he's going to drop them welterweight uh, Vegas Edmund is there like they have all these middleweights. But yeah, overall, I, I do think that Marvin Vittori is going to win this one. I think he's smart enough which is a weird thing to say about Marvin, but I think he's smart enough to know how to, to win this fight. Like don't put yourself in any bad situation. Do not give Roman the ability to take your legs. Like the way Roman sweeps guys off, off of his back is very impressive. Like the guy is a legit grappler, which is kind of funny to think about. Cause like the way he kind of acted in, in his first few fights where fuckers asking his coach, want me to submit him now coach? And he didn't submit the guy who, who was that? That doesn't matter. It, it's just really hard for me to look past the issues that I see with Roman. Like he's what, 34 years old. Not to say that that's awful. It, it's just like, I cannot get over that Trevin Giles fight. Like, the fuck was that guy's dangerous, but I, I think Marvin wins this one by decision. I don't think he'll finish Roman. Roman's pretty hard to finish. Uh, it just has to not leave himself exposed. And I think he wins this one. Next bout, we've got flyweight Jennifer Maya versus Casey King O'Neill. 
O'Neal minus 180, come back on Maya plus 150. I ain't going to spend too much time on it. I got Maya on this one. I'm going to take a shot on Maya at the plus money. I think Maya is just better, period. I've said this a lot about Casey, and I'm really hoping I'm not wrong because, like, I really hope I'm not wrong. Casey is not a top 10 fighter. I think she's been beating girls that are primed to be plucked, if you know what I mean. The only weird one there was uh, Laura Procopio, where she choked her out and then she blamed uh, Procopio, that is, he blamed her, period. I think that if Jennifer Maya comes in here not uh, perioding up the place, I think she wins it. I think she's better on the feet. She's better on the ground. Jiu-Jitsu is going to be better. She hits harder. Casey O'Neill's kind of hittable, very hittable, not kind of hittable. She's definitely hittable. Going back and watching fights with her and um, Antonina, there's just so many red flags, but she ends up winning these fights. Antonina Shevchenko essentially put her in a in a crucifix and was landing elbows. She got out of it, mostly because Antonina's grappling isn't up to the snuff. The girl is... Definitely high on confidence, which can be a dangerous thing sometimes. Like she's very relentless. She's got the good cardio. Her striking is good enough to beat a certain level of girl. I don't think her grappling's all that great. Like it can definitely be used to her advantage with girls like, for example, Shevchenko, the or Shitchenko as I call her, and definitely Shayna Dobson. Laura Procopio, who is now Laura Fritzen. I think that was, I don't want to discredit that, right? Because she choked her the fuck out. But it just, it's a little too strange to me. I don't think she's going to be able to do that to Jennifer Maya. Like Jennifer Maya's literally fought the top of the heap of the division. To me, Casey O'Neill's a little worse version of Marina Moreau's. It's just, except that Marina's more of a stand up tennis noise lady opposed to Casey O'Neill, who is like relentlessly going for the takedown. But I think if she does go for the takedown, she's not going to like what's going to come at her with Jennifer Maya. Like, uh, I think she can get swept and then Jennifer can get on top. I think if Jennifer wants to keep it on the feet, she will find the harder strikes with that right hand. It, we'll see, man. It's a woman's fight at women's MMA. Also, I forgot Casey is coming back from ACL surgery. That's another big thing. Like, I don't know if she's going to be 100%. It's a little, to me, disrespectful putting Jennifer Maya in the underdog spot, which I'm going to try to capitalize on. Even going back and watching her fight with uh, Manon Fioreau, like she lost that fight, but she had some good moments against Manon. She threw a high, high kick that landed on her face. It didn't necessarily amount to much, but it was like, damn, if that was anybody else, it might have really changed the outcome of that fight. But I, I thought she had a really good account of, of herself against Manon. And she's only losing right now to the best of the division, right? She's losing to the Feroz of the world, the Chukagians, who I think Chukagian would absolutely destroy Casey O'Neill. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll go with Jennifer Maya on this one. Plus money on this fight on a girl who's coming back with ACL surgery. Uh, no brainer for me. So I'll go with Jennifer Maya by decision. Next bout, we've got Gunner. Gunny Nelson versus Bam Bam Brian Barbarina. Come back, or sorry, the uh, odds have it minus 375 for Nelson. Come back on Barbarina plus 280. To me, there, there's not really much to say about this one. Gunner, Gunner's strange, man. He came back from, you know, a layoff and beat Takashi Sato, but he seemed so hesitant to fight Sato, like he was afraid to get knocked out. Um, shit, man. Like, Gunny is not a guy to put on your parlays. I think Brian, obviously, he's a tough son of a gun. He is relentless, man. His cardio is great. I wrote down something quite fascinating about the guy. What did I write? Do, do, do. Oh, yeah, like, I'm glad he's finally getting, like, the, the, the respect that he deserves. He's on the main card. He's getting good fights. Um, people were picking him to beat guys like, you know, Robbie Lawler, like, a fight ago. It was Matt Brown's going to whip his ass. He beats Matt Brown. He beats Matt Brown, all right? He beat Matt Brown. Then he knock out, knocks out Robbie Lawler, and then it's like, oh, he's going to beat up Rafael Dos Anjos. I'm like, yeah, right on. He's not, but good for you for thinking that. 
Brian's an awesome guy, man. Like he, he's got like kind of this shitty physique, but he will beat your ass. He's not the fastest guy, but he has great volume, good output. Gunny is going to have to grapple him or really hurt him on the feet. Like Gunny's got the prettier striking. He's got the karate base. He's much faster, the better jujitsu. It's just that Brian is a guy that if he makes it his fight and he makes it dirty, Gunny doesn't like that shit. He's not going to like it at all. If he can stuff takedowns from Gunny, he can definitely come out here and beat the crap out of Gunnar Nelson, make him start shooting terribly. It, it just really depends on what Nelson's going to come out here. If Gunnar comes out here confident enough on his feet, I think he's going to have really good success against Brian, just getting out of the way, mixing in takedowns, throwing head kicks that can potentially knock out Barbarina. It is going to be a Nelson for me by a decision to play. Uh, it's just that I'm not touching it because I know Brian has a really good chance right now to beat Gunnar Nelson. Had this been maybe a few years ago, I think Gunnar whips his ass pretty easily because back in the day, Gunnar was a killer. It's just that I don't know where he is right now. Like, where is Gunnar Nelson? He, I know he's got the jujitsu. I know he's very good with it. Fucker submitted uh, where he beat Jeff Monson. I don't know if he submitted him. Jeff Monson, the snowman at heavyweight and shit like that. But yeah, to me, it's like, uh, I'm not, I'm not messing with this one because I know how good Barbarina is. And he's an ass whooper, man. He fucking perpetual ass whooping machine. I'll go with Gunnar Nelson decision, but I'm staying away from it. Next bout is at lightweight. We've got Justin, the highlight gagey versus Rafael Ataman Fiziev. Co-main event. Fantastic co-main event. Um, there is this narrative right now that apparently Justin Gage is being disrespected by a lot of people just because not only, pardon me, the odds, which are minus 244 Fiziev, come back on Gage plus 190. Just this whole narrative of like Fiziev's going to make it look easy against Justin Gage. That's what I'm hearing, not necessarily what I'm saying. But is it is it crazy to say, though, like Justin Gage? He is definitely getting up in age. He's 34 years old at lightweight. He's been getting hurt a lot. And he's fighting quite possibly the best striker. For sure, definitely at lightweight. But there could be a <laughs> there could be an argument in the UFC, the best striker in the UFC, potentially. Oh God, man. Every time I see Fiziev, he keeps surprising me and getting better. Like he he shows me some weaknesses. For example, with Bobby Green, I'm like, oh shit, that's not good. Fixes that weakness and knocks out Brad Riddell with a spinning wheel kick. Breaks Rad Riddell, man. Like makes him just like he froze him and his body just went into like shock. Then he knocks out Dos Anjos, man. He he showed off his ever improving game of just stuffing takedowns. And then when he got taken down later, he got back up. Like he's he's definitely deserved of this spot. He's number five. Funny enough, Justin Gagey is number seven, which is I never thought I'd see that. I thought he'd still be in perpetually like the the top five, but seeing Justin Gagey as number seven is a little weird. Gagey, on the other hand, like his his style is to the point where it's like kind of figured out. Like he is definitely a good wrestler, but he doesn't use his wrestling. He's more of a counter wrestler. He's got power in the hands. He's got those hard leg kicks. I just don't know how well they're going to work against the Tiger Muay Thai striker. It's like striker of the year, fucking 17 years in a row, for God's sake. The guy's fantastic. I did think to myself, I'm like, well, what's what's a good game plan for Justin to beat Fiziev? Like, Fiziev's really depending on that movement to get out of the way and just stifle justin so obviously throwing the leg kicks you can't throw hard naked leg kicks against fiziev a muay thai specialist that easily you're gonna have to sneak him in there i think if justin can get those in there maybe a couple good hard ones it could affect the the uh the pace that fiziev is gonna present it's just that the moment fiziev finds out like he figures out when those are coming gets your timing he's gonna be checking those or getting out of the way it's going to be a tough fight for Justin Gagey. He has to make this into a dog fight. If this is a dog fight, this is Justin Gagey's fight, 100%. Like he can push a pace on on Fiziev, get him tired, attack the body. It's just going to be really difficult to stay conscious when doing that against Fiziev. And I wrote down something that I don't, I wasn't sure if I was 100% in agreement with because I wrote down like when it comes to Justin's chin, 
he's always been a guy who gets wa- rocked or wobbled, but he's got the recovery to come back. And I'm like, can is that gone? Is that type of recovery gone? Like shit, even um, Charles dropped him, but he was getting his way back up. And because Charles isn't a, particularly a ground and pound guy, he's going to choke you out. We really don't know if he could have put him out on the, on the ground. Uh, I don't really think Justin's ever been put out cold. He's been hurt a lot. Uh, I think the closest was when Eddie dropped him with the knee and then Poirier finished him, but he's always like wobbly in zombie mode. I'm thinking I wrote down, like, is that done? Like if Fizia gets him in that chicken dance, is he going to be able to recover? Because if, if Fizia gets you in that chicken dance, it's going to be tough for anybody to try to recover. We saw what he did to uh, RDA where he cracked him with that left hook, kind of like a jump knee with the right jump knee came down, land that left hook, made him do the chicken dance and finish him off with the ground and pound. If he hurts Justin, which I am guaranteeing you he will, he's going to put him out. I'm going to say Fiziev knocks him out in round number two. I think round number one is going to be a beautiful round for Justin where he he's putting on a good pace, but Fiziev is going to like kind of make the reads. Round number two comes out. Justin's going to make that mistake, whether it be like throwing the naked leg kick because when he does that, he kind of throws it full power. That's another thing. Justin's been throwing full power lately when he gets like uh, flustered. And that's going to get him in a shit ton of trouble. Uh, but I do see Fizzy of knocking him out, guaranteed, at least for me. Like, I'm going to bank on it. I'm going to put a bet on it. Just Fizzy of knockout. And we'll see what happens, right? Like, I am fully prepared. Like, I my body is ready for if Justin Gagey comes out here and knocks out Fizzy or just finishes him. I'm not going to be surprised. I'm just looking forward to Fizzy of knocking out Justin Gagey and hopefully making a little bit of scratch on the side. So, for me, uh, Fiziev knockout, I'll say round number two. Now we got the main event of the evening, Rocky, Leon, Rocky Edwards versus Kamaru. Nigerian nightmare, Usman. The odds still at the Usman side, minus 245, come back on Edwards is plus 200. The thing I remember the most about this, because I was watching the fight. Um, for those of you, I think you know how I was watching the fight. Uh, let's just say there was a bit of a delay. And I decided to check Twitter because I was bored as fuck, man. Like, Leon's broken. He's like, his coach is like, go to do something, Leon. Leon, do something. Go feel his sort of yourself. It's a horrible accent. But, yeah, they're like, stop being a little bitch. Still being a little bitch, not doing much. Just Usman's like, I'll take a round off. And then uh, I get on Twitter, and I think it might have been uh, – the hell's his name? Adrian Yanez. He's just posting like OMG exclamation point. Like, ah, this face over and over. And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, something happens, doesn't it? Put the phone down and I'm waiting. And then whack, there it is. And I'm like, oh, that's crazy. Like, I wasn't, it, it didn't surprise me. It was just like, it happened. Leon, Leon knocking out Kamaru wasn't like this, holy shit, I can't believe it happened. It was more so how it happened that was spectacular. The fact that he was getting his ass beat. You saw the life drain out of his body. He just didn't seem like himself. And Kamaru was just coasting the whole way. And that's what Kamaru does. And Kamaru was also very good at like defending himself from kicks. Like he's been hurt by kicks by Colby. Like in their first, I think in their first fight, he hurt him with a head kick. Just that uh, Colby doesn't have the same kind of snap to it. When Leon landed it, I was like, huh. That was what he needed, and he got it. And then I also remember seeing a, a video of a Triple C just saying, like, hey, Ali, easy money. And moments later, he gets knocked out. I'm like, you fucking cunt. That's what happens when you say that. Uh, I don't know how this is going to go. I really don't know because with Usman being, like, obviously, like, nearing retirement, he's 35 years old, horrible knees. It's not a secret that his knees are terrible. Like, he's in constant pain. But he... Persever- he perseveres, but he can definitely win this fight. Uh, I think he's got a better chance of winning this fight, period, because obviously he knows that the head kick is going to be there. Not to say he didn't know. I think he's just going to be like, do not make any stupid mistakes. What I liked about the f- the, the second fight, the title winning fight for Leon, is that first round we saw just how good Leon was, the fact that he reversed 
Kamaru got on top, took his back. I was like, good shit. Good shit from Leon, right? Can he do it again? He did not. And you could chop that up for the possibility of like the elevation in Utah. Like we, we really don't know. It's just like if this goes to a decision and Kamaru's not as dominant, could they give it to Leon? To me, it's like it has to be Usman. Like the only way Usman loses this fight is if his body is absolutely done. If he still has the ability to do what he did to him the first, like the first fight and the second fight, minus the head kick, he's gonna win that fight. Shit, eight out of ten times. I do think Edwards has one, I guess two two chances to win. We saw the first one, which was the the head kick, and I do think Edwards has got a good chance to like reverse and submit Kamaru if say we're doing this 10 out of eight out of ten times. Yeah, Kamaru for me is gonna win this one. He's gonna do the same shit. He's gonna be a little bit more precise, a little bit more careful, and I think a little bit more vicious with his ground and pound. He is gonna be actively looking to finish the fight. And I think if Kamaru wins this fight, he might potentially retire. Um that would be interesting because I, I just don't know if he has that motivation in him anymore. I think if he loses as well, he's going to retire. I, I just, I wouldn't be able to see him having to fight contenders to get back to the belt. It's just, it's just rough for me, man. Like I, he has to win this fight. Not to say that I'm a fan of Usman. I am hoping Rocky knocks him out again. It's just realistically, I kept thinking to myself that whole fight, like he broke Leon. Like I've never seen somebody broken. If that kick did not connect, Leon's not winning. And that is the truth. He, what else is he going to do? Throw a punch? Knock him out? No, that kick needed to land. It just happened to land. And not to say it was a lucky kick. It was just the perfect kick. And the perfect kick is really hard to land. He ended up landing it. I don't think it's going to land again. Unless Rocky is actively fainting and just stuffing takedowns and putting a type of pressure and attack on Kamaru, that Kamaru becomes uncomfortable to the point that he is not in his full mind and fac uh, faculties and he gets hit and he gets dropped and he gets hurt. Fantastic for Leon. Being that he's fighting in his home country, it's a double-edged sword. Like I said with the, who was it? Um, with Jai Herbert, like if you are fighting in your country and you don't want to get embarrassed, you might make some dumbass mistakes in there. And you might not uh, be motivated to really push a pace because you're afraid of getting knocked out, particularly with Jai Herbert. For Leon, like he cannot let himself fall to that same trap that he did in the first or the second fight. Uh, so I do expect Leon to look a lot better, but I do expect Kamaro to just completely negate him. And you're going to hear a lot of boos from the O2 because <laughs> Kamaro's going to get booed like a motherfucker. But I do have Kamaro Usman winning this one by a decision. I'm really hoping Rocky does the same again. I really hope Rocky looks better than he's ever looked here. But you also have to remember, Leon Edwards' chin isn't the best either, man. Like, Not to say that Camaro's got a shitty chin. I am suspecting that he is a little chinny, but not as chinny as, as Leon Edwards. Like, Leon got cracked by, oh God, by Nate Diaz. So there's always that chance that Camaro lands that nasty punch. And it's usually when Camaro's throwing straight punches, in this fight, he was throwing a lot of loopy shit and then ducking under for the takedown. Uh, yeah, I got Kabaro to win this one by decision. So that have, that's been Johnny with Tiger Bomb MMA. Let me know what you think about predictions and whatnot. I want to know if you think that the O2 is going to play a factor in any of these fights, where if, say, for example, the judges might hear the roar of the crowd for a, a missed kick and they end up giving it to somebody. I'm hoping that happens with Macedo where she throws a kick, doesn't really land, and they're like, ah. then Juliana Miller loses after controlling on top for majority of the round. Um, that's really what I'm hoping, especially at the plus 325. I, shit, I've seen it happen to Miller once before. Why can't it happen again? Uh, but yeah, Johnny Tiger Bomb MMA, leave whatever, comment, shit, whatever. Uh, I'll see you next week.